Hey everyone, this last week, shock as the Canadian Prime Minister got re-elected, it's Trudeau, Trudeau. In America, there was farce after a police arrested someone at the J6 rally for having a bunch of hidden firearms on him, but the police later admitted that they'd made a mistake and forgotten that he was carrying guns because he was actually an undercover officer, proving once and for all that you really can't make this stuff up. And in personal news, I've started writing a book about the things I should be doing, it's called my autobiography. But anyway, the big story this week has been the shortage at the petrol pumps, as well as other sections of the food supply chain, which has all of course been blamed on Brexit by the BBC, largely because they can't blame President Trump for things these days, so that's their fallback position for everything. It's a bit like someone ordering sweet and sour chicken because they just can't be bothered reading the menu, or facts in this case. Does your car need a new clutch? Blame Brexit. You can't remember where you misplaced your iPhone? Brexit. Your boiler needs fixed? Probably Brexit. Actually, that one is at least partially true because it was Theresa May who signed everyone up to eradicate gas heaters by 2050, along with petrol-driven cars and pretty much everything else that's been invented since the day that James Watt decided that he didn't fancy walking all the way from Stockton to Darlington. So what's going on? Well, there really are two problems at hand with regards to all this. The first of them is the fact that there's a shortage of lorry drivers. That's got nothing to do with Brexit. There's a truly global phenomenon right now. Europe is similarly crippled by supply chain issues. And in America right now, there's a shortage of school bus drivers, which may one day be turned into a TV movie starring Mini Driver as a bus driver. Who would have thought that paying people generous stay-at-home pandemic payments might mean that they don't ever want to go back to working a low-wage job ever again? What's the difference between a bench and the minimum wage? A bench can support a family. There is no shortage of drivers right now, but there certainly is a global shortage of people willing to go back to working long hours and be paid next to nothing for doing so. Personally speaking, I'm wondering if George Osborne could be roped in to help out by adding lorry driver to his increasingly farcical long list of jobs. The second part of these shortages, though, is entirely British-made. There is a shortage of industrial CO2 in the country, largely because almost all of it was made at two fertiliser plants that were recently forced to close due to the government's decision to make natural gas expensive and close industry, with zero regards to the knock-on consequences. When I say the government's decision, I mean government's plural, because everyone for the last 20 or so years seems to have signed up to the idea of closing down power stations and moving all the factories to China. Also that the carbon emissions can happen in someone else's country and they can claim that they've met their completely arbitrary target for the UK. If you move an iron foundry from Britain to China, global emissions do not go down one iota. I'm left vaguely uncertain as to who is stupider, people queuing up at a petrol station in a Tesla, or the left-wing people invited onto the news to claim that a queue of 50 cars outside of a BP garage is what Nigel Farage meant when he promised to put an end to, quote, freedom of movement. Life is all about context, though. Take the expression, Jesus loves you. That's great to hear at a church service, but not such a good thing to hear if you're in a Mexican prison. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, like, subscribe.